Hello and Merry Christmas from Advent Lutheran Church in Lake Ann, Michigan. My name is Tim Jan. I'm the pastor of this congregation, and it's my joy to be able to share with you uh, the gospel message and my sermon for the name of Jesus, which is the second Sunday in Christmas, and it is going to be on January the 1st. 2023. We always welcome you to like this video and to follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay in touch and continue to hear this good news about Jesus from us. If you're in the area, we really heartily encourage you to come and worship with us at 9.30 every Sunday morning. We offer communion to everyone, and you are more than welcome and encouraged to come, uh, and also to follow us, if you're not in our area, on our live stream, which does go live every Sunday morning at 9.30 in the morning. Let's pray together. Eternal Father, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our holy gospel for this Sunday is found in the second chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has been taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they had made known all that had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What child is this? Does it really take eight days to answer that simple question? Well, no. In fact, it will take a whole lifetime to really answer that question. But what's in a name anyway? Couldn't this child still have been a savior if he'd been named Juan or Eugene or Trevor? Of course he would. Yet on this eighth day of Christmas, we celebrate the name of Jesus as both an answer and as a question. It's a mystery. On the one hand, it is God's answer to all the world's pain. And on the other hand... It's a question that Mary and Joseph, like any parents, will be asking all their lives. Jesus, who will he be? What will he do? What child is this? You know, it took me almost 42 years before I finally called up my dad and asked, Why Timothy? I thought it might, must be some story behind my name. Maybe there's a Bible verse they liked, or maybe there's an important friend or relative or mentor. Not so much. To hear my dad tell it, my parents looked through the baby books. They found a biblical name. Apparently, Timothy is Greek for one who fears God. And they just liked the sound of it. Although my dad did point out that... Um, the, he was the only one in, of his siblings wh who happened to have a biblical name, David, and he ended up becoming a pastor. And turns out I'm the only one of my siblings with a biblical name, and sure enough, I became a pastor. Now, my sister Amy was a Lutheran deaconess for some years, but she's a teacher now. Now, this may come as interesting news for a couple of my kids who happen to be named Ezra and Magdalena, but then again, What's in the name, right? You follow your own calling. Now, Joseph and Mary 
follow Jewish custom by having their son circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. And that's when he is officially named Jesus or Yeshua. Yeshua is a common name. It's the Hebrew version of Joshua after the Israelite later leader who succeeded Moses. But Mary and Joseph didn't come up with that name. The text reminds us this name was given to Mary by an angel from the Lord. And this same angel has already told her that this child will be great. He will be son of the Most High. He will sit on the throne of David. So there's a few answers in the mix of this, but it also just produces so many more questions. What child is this? We ask the same thing about our kids. Who are they? from the very time that they're babies, and we pretty much never stop. Frankly, no matter how old we get, we never really stop asking the question of ourselves, who am I? We are a people that is constantly forming our own identity. It's such an important question, such a basic question, but it's a question that we never fully answer. Because the answer changes over time. As kids, we identify ourselves with our friends based on our common interests, whether it's movies or books or sports or clubs or activities. We grow and we start to identify ourselves more with what we study, what our career is, what our relationship is, what causes that are important to us with raising kids. Our families put it, our families of origin, I should say, put a pretty strong stamp on our identity from the get-go. Sometimes we'll spend our whole lives and our whole identities either trying to please our parents or trying to escape from them. Our culture pretty, pretty, puts a pretty strong stamp on our identities too. We get placed in boxes based on nationality, race, class, gender, sexual orientation, political persuasion. And, of course, there's all sorts of advertisers and algorithms working every minute of every day to try to tell us who we are based on what they want us to buy. And yet, after all that, after nature and nurture, after careers, after families, after demographics, even when we've got all that sorted out, it sometimes feels like something is still missing. The whole is more than the sum of its parts. Isn't there more to me? Who am I? When I minister with older adults, especially those who have left behind who they were in a career, sometimes decades ago, and who they were as a parent, and they have had to set aside sometimes even who they were as a spouse many years ago, It's an important question to think, who am I now? Isn't there more to me? Isn't there more to me than what I will do or what I am doing or what I have already done? Isn't there more to us than everything that we accomplished? Well, God's answer is yes. There's so much more to us. And a little bit of the answer is right there in the name of Jesus. We just have to unpack it a little bit. Yeshua. Now you should know that most Hebrew names say something about God. If it's a name that includes the syllable L in it, that means God. So Daniel means God is my judge. And Israel means wrestles with God. And a name that has Yah or Jah in it refers to Y-H-W-H. It's a syllable that's more respectful never to utter in the Hebrew language because it is the name of the Lord, a special name which means I am. I am who I am. So Elijah means the Lord is God. And Isaiah means the Lord is salvation. Every Hebrew name tells a story. And the name Yahshua means the Lord saves. 
Matthew 121. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. The name of Jesus declares what God has done throughout history. Again and again, God saves the people. It also declares what Jesus is going to do. Everywhere he goes, he provides healing for the sick, forgiveness for the ashamed, welcome to the outcasts, justice for the oppressed, food for the hungry, and freedom for the captives. Everything Jesus does is an act of salvation, including the way he dies, taking all our pain and our suffering and our shame to the cross with him and offering us a whole new connection to God. Jesus' name, God saves, is also his mission. In Israel's early days, God gave the priests a special blessing for the people. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, it's pretty great that God would have those wishes and intentions for us in the first place. That we would have God's blessing and protection and a positive connection and peace But that's just the beginning. That's not all that's happening here. God says to the priests, this is how they shall put my name on the people of Israel and bless them. The Israelites aren't just the ones who have God's goodwill. They are also the ones who are marked by God's name to share God's goodwill with the world. All this stuff, blessing and protection and connection and peace, is God's gift to the world through God's people, the people of Israel, the people who gave birth to this Jesus, this God saves. They are blessed to be a blessing. In the same way, at our baptism, God puts the name of Jesus on us. The name the Lord saves becomes our story, just like it was Jesus' story. The name the Lord saves becomes our mission, just like it was Jesus' mission. Not that we can save the world. God is already doing that through Jesus. But we can lift up the name of Jesus. We can draw attention to what God is doing. And we can be one small little part in our own little town of how God saves the world. People can experience that salvation in tiny little bits through what we do and what we say. We are blessed to be a blessing. God puts Jesus' name on us that we might take part in Jesus' action for the sake of the world. No matter our race or class or gender or sexual orientation, no matter how young or old, married, singled, or divorced, parent or not a parent, no matter what grades we got or merit badges we earned or promotions we did or didn't get in our life, we still have an identity and a mission through Yeshua bar Yosef, Jesus, the child whose name is salvation. We are marked with his name. We are marked with the same name that one day will cause every knee to bow and every tongue to confess. The name that will one day unite all the universe in praise and in peace. Mary and Joseph asked the right question, what child is this? And God answered, this child is is your salvation. So now, when we see and meet a new baby, and we ask, what child is this? There's a lot that we don't know, but there are some things that we do. A child of God. A child loved. A child saved. Thanks be to God. Amen.